this process and uh, hopefully this will yield uh, a soon to be fixed science for us. Um, and ideally, as these uh, 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 initiatives are, are seem to be working very well, uh, we're gonna arrive at the promised land if we succeed, uh, where we would have open scientific communication, uh, uh, much better uh, incentives, crowdsourced and especially cumulative uh, science, right? Um, but we think that there is an obstacle that uh, is very important and that has been neglected in previous literature, which is uh, uh, how we are currently teaching our, our students. So, so for us, it's a little bit puzzling how is it that uh, it's still common practice to teach uh, uh, any subject matter without emphasizing that scientific claims should be taking light of probability uncertainty, uh, research designs, the samples used, the qualities, um, as well as the measurements used to assert uh, um, a given conclusion. Now, if you're thinking about, well, uh, how is this going to be, uh, uh, what is the consequence, what is the impact? Well, first of all, clearly, uh, future researchers, future scholars that uh, arrive or want to enter academia and they are not really aware of the current state of, 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 of their field, as well as uh, future consumers of science, because we're not only educating people uh, um, or future scholars, we're also educating people who will consume the science that we produce. So this is super important when it comes to a, a much more um, um, uh, cultured uh, uh, and uh, when it comes to, to the ethical goals of science, which is uh, uh, scientific um, communication. Uh, and in the third, and I believe what is the most important for scientists, is that once um, we have the people that are educated on open and reproducible science, we also have uh, more people that are able to engage in collaborative projects as well as crowdsource and citizen scientists. So in physics, we have a lot of um, citizen scientists working with in projects really complicated with CERN and, and NASA. So it, it's really important that we realize that psychological science or uh, political science is not that different after all, and we can uh, harness that, uh, uh, that potential for our science. So how is that that we propose to do this is with FORT, which is uh, an online dedicated uh, source for faculty, institutions, and teachers to adapt their cur current curricula um, that if was implemented before, we wouldn't be in the situation that we are now. So it's a pathway uh, enabling continuous improvements towards open and reproducible science. So you can always get better at it. So our main motivation is that teaching of reproducible and open science practices is the clearest indication of the degree to which institutions, universities, and departments embody the principles of credible science. So th this is our main motivation. Uh, so how does this tool work? Basically, it has it, it works in two ways. Um, it is an assessment tool in which we are going to evaluate institutions and courses according to uh, uh, open and reproducible practices. And we are also going to provide the way, the path forward in, in that sense, as well as uh, um, gradual uh, progress within that. Um, so, for example, when it comes to assessment, we have six core principles, uh, reproducibility and replicability replicability knowledge, conceptual and statistical knowledge, reproducible analysis, pre-registration, open data and materials, and replication research. So basically that means that we're going to evaluate these courses in, in, in these institutions according to the six principles. I see a lot of people taking photos. I'll provide. <laughs> So uh, each of those principles uh, will have a breadth and a depth because it's important that we are uh, we're very inclusive in our courses, in, in our assessment, that we're able to include a lot of beginners. So if you can only talk about, uh, for example, uh, give people information 
that there is a crisis, we want to include you in our, in our assessment. So breadth is how widely teaching is distributed among a, a university and courses, and depth is the degree to which instu uh, students interact with the content, right? So, uh, um, okay, I'll, I'll go for it now. Um, so moving back, the, the part of the, the, the resource gateway is that for each of the core principles of FORT, we're going to provide a curated list of resources that is currently online on our website, and as well as a crowdsourced uh, database that already has about 2,000 sources that they are tagged and people can search for, for example, um, a dominance analysis, which is something that is not, you, you don't currently hear a lot about it. But there's uh, about 57 references on meta-analysis and so forth. Um, so this is the website. Um, uh, there's a, a link to it. I will go to here. And when you access this website, this is the, 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 the landing page in which you can read about the, the problem, a proposed solution, uh, what are the existing initiatives. This is a, a little introduction on the uh, fourth and as assessment tool. Uh, so how is that we're going to evaluate courses um, and the process of that, um, as well as a resource uh, tool and an implementation plan. Um, if we go to a page in principles, here we have all six principles, the summary of what they, these are constituted and how is it that we're going to code every course. So for example, what does it mean to have a score uh, of an application for, a, 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 say, replication? Right? It means that you know what QRPs are and you have implemented that in your own course. So students not only know what QRP are, but they were able to identify QRPs in a given uh, study and part and have been evaluated on it. So moving forward, as I have one minute, this is the assessment tool. So for example, we created mock-up courses and here are um, how they are, how our courses that are online fit more or less. And this is the, the minimal template in which you have to declare your support, just like top guidelines, sort of a way. Uh, and this is the whole database. Um, and what is important to show here is that we can provide ranking at the university level and their grades, as well as uh, for courses and institutions. And we think that this sort of rake, raking is what moves uh, uh, academia. So we're, we're going to be able to show that uh, the embodiment of open and reproducible science also is adopted by less known universities that have a lot of people really trying, really making their best efforts. And to finish, thank you, Sam and Mike. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Flavio, for this presentation and to this uh, very innovative, uh, um, you could say, uh, research uh, education uh, um, exercise. <laughs> um, we actually do have uh, room uh, for, uh, for one or two questions, if you, if you have them. Okay. Uh, Nicole Jens, Nottingham uh, University, we talked before, and this is a really amazing project. Um, I have two questions. Um, one is, how do um, syllabi or courses get selected to then be ranked by you? Um, and the second question is, um, how, it, it, uh, in, in the bigger picture, how are you going to get busy teachers and lecturers to want to join this and to kind of really want to engage with it? Okay, so for the first question, all it takes is that uh, um, you, you feel this minimal template uh, uh, saying that you support for it and that your course um, uh, subscribes or abides by uh, one of the six cores in which they are. Um, now, as for the motivation, um, I believe 
it's intrinsic motivation. And uh, of course, we have the ranking, of course, uh, that also gives institutions some sort of visibility. But uh, open science movement has been, and, and science in itself, it's all about intrinsic motivation. We're not doing this for profit or anything else. So I believe this is good in of itself. Doing better science, I mean. <laughs> I think that we can agree on. Um, anyone else in the room? I think there should be some selfish reasons for lecturers uh, to join that. We all are obviously the choir that you're preaching to. I am the biggest one of them. I'm, you know, I totally support everything regarding teaching. But I also think that it is very hard to get lecturers who have you know, their syllabus ready each year to really get them to engage. This is my main problem. I have a hard time getting other people engaged with it. And I feel if um, we could point out more what would be selfish reasons why I should be doing this, what's in it for me as a lecturer, if we could just pinpoint a few, uh, two or three top reasons why it's really good for me as a lecturer, not just being a good person, okay. uh, I think that could really boost this way, way more. Okay, is 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 not the ranking because that that was my my contribute one of saying hey we're gonna rank people in institutions and courses and we're gonna have not only institutional and university but also teachers ranking so that people can sort of compete with each other in a way is is that yeah um, Vernon Gale again um, yeah I obviously hear that point and people are always busy teaching staff are always busy but. Um, I'm often thought of uh, Paul Dolan, who's at the LSE, who won't, I believe on his courses, he'll sh he won't show any slides because he says, well, I research attention all year long. I can't expect students to kind of split their attention because all the evidence is, it was it. And one of the things that certainly happened in my teaching, the more and more I talk about this sort of stuff in my research, I can't then go into a classroom and not kind of want to bring some of that in as well. So I think there'll be a much more natural movement if you you undertake open social science you'll want to teach about open social science in an open social science sort of way so I think uh, function will uh, form will follow, follow function as it were. May, may I add one thing is there time right okay um, for one, one for, for one, yeah. So then. just the slide. So I think that uh, there's obviously um, uh, we're all obviously are interested in RAs, for example. Whenever we we're teaching, uh, if if there's somebody who wants to do a master thesis that uh, we can contribute or or learn from. Um, but there is also the long game in which we are training consumers of scientific uh, uh, knowledge that we, we need to understand that science can't be this island in which we are now today. And most of all, and I think this is the most selfish reason, is that once we are able to teach them and, and disseminate this kind of knowledge, and this is a little bit more general, what will happen is that we'll be able to do way more collaborative in crowdsource and citizen science. This is. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Flavio, once again.